My name is Jocelyn and I work at the Parramatta Heritage Visitor Information Centre. I'm here today to tell you about a great Parramatta architect who worked in this district from the 1840s onwards. His name is James Hewison. James Hewison was born into a family of builders in 1800 in Scotland. Young James was apprenticed to his father as a builder, not an architect. He learnt to build in all building forms from timber, brick and stone. The thorough Scottish education system ensured that James also learnt plastering, bookkeeping and glazing. Times were tough in Scotland in the 1820s and Hewison went to London town where he quickly rose from a builder to a quantity surveyor. In 1832, James Hewison sailed into Sydney town with no job, no income and no contacts. He had his education, his wits and his work experience, remembering prestigious London. Judge Stevenson commissioned Hewison to build a front veranda on his Darlinghurst mansion, Orwell. Many people saw and admired this front veranda. Perhaps because of this veranda, John Verge in 1835 commissioned James Hewison to be his master or construction builder on Vineyard. Vineyard was a mansion designed by Verge for Parramatta colonial royalty, Hannah Ball and Anna MacArthur. Hewison's training and skills meant that he could interpret Verge's plans without supervision, was able to hire tradesmen and labourers, source building supplies and even balance the books. Hewison's high standard of workmanship combined with his honesty resulted in him being recognised as a master builder all in the one project, Vineyard. It was also at Vineyard that Hewison met his wife Anne, a Scottish maid working for the MacArthurs. They came to live in Parramatta with Hewison purchasing an old house and a timber yard and astute move for a young builder. It was on this site that he built the family home, Kia Ora. They had a long and happy marriage, raised 12 children and volunteered at their local church, St Andrew's Presbyterian Church. James's meteoric rise was set to continue here in Parramatta. Parramatta's first parliamentarian, George Oakes, commissioned James in 1841 to design his new home, Perth House, here in George Street. This was James's first commission as an architect and he'd finally gained recognition as a professional man here in Parramatta. If you remember, James's first job was to design a front veranda. Verandas originated in India and quickly spread throughout the British colonies, including here in Parramatta. A veranda is a structure that stops the hot sun from heating up buildings. It's also an economic means of expanding living areas for growing families. Here at Perth House, the veranda columns are made from timber set in stone hobs. The stone hobs were a clever idea to stop termites from eating up into the timber columns. James went on to design and build Waver Tree in New Zealand Street for himself. He later gave Waver Tree to his daughter Anne as a wedding present. This reflected the wealth the family had now accumulated whilst in Parramatta. Meanwhile, James had entered into a partnership with local master stonemason, Nathaniel Payton. The pair went on over the next 25 years to build many of Parramatta's beautiful private and public buildings. Early in their partnership, they decided to build not just one major public building, but two. Parramatta Courthouse that once stood in Church Street and where we are now, Parramatta Jail. Colonial architect Mortimer Lewis commissioned the pair to build his elaborate Greek Revival style courthouse and police lockup. Parramatta Jail was based on British reform ideas with blocks radiating out from a central observation tower and enclosed by a massive perimeter wall. What a gamble! How were they going to find enough tradesmen, labourers and building supplies? Surely this pair were heading for bankruptcy. The fact that both jobs were completed on time and within budget proved everybody wrong. Hewson was next called upon to design churches. The first being All Saints Anglican here in North Parramatta, built in a Gothic design and completed in 1847. The Cumberland Times 
proudly commented that this would be both a pretty and elegant structure and the architect is our townsman, Mr James Hewson. This commission was closely followed by St John's Anglican Cathedral in Parramatta. St John's had been in a state of disrepair for years and Hewson had been commissioned to build a Norman style chancel and nave. He had to match up these new buildings with the existing twin towers. This was a difficult job for any architect. The fact that these structures are still standing today speaks volumes of Hooson's talents. As Parramatta grew into a prosperous and independent town, James continued to volunteer. He was elected to Parramatta's first district council in 1844, to tremendous applaud. The Parramatta Chronicle went on to say that James, a man of property, possessed every moral and intellectual qualification necessary for office. He was then elected to Treasurer of Parramatta Hospital in 1848. This showed that the people of Parramatta had a lot of faith in James's ability to handle public money honestly. Perhaps the most important committee position for James personally was that of a water commissioner. The family had lost a child to disease from polluted water. James fought for the people of Parramatta to have a permanent and clean water supply, which resulted in the building of Hunts Creek Dam or Lake Parramatta. James continued to design and build beautiful homes in Parramatta, including Morton House and Endrum, and some humbler structures, such as the shelter sheds at the Parramatta Lunatic Asylum. Upon retirement, he handed his business interests over to his children and quietly gave up his treasured committee positions. He planted an orchard, drank tea with Anne and visited his many friends and grandchildren. Throughout the district, James was known as Honest James. He died in May 1876 at the age of 75 years and is buried up at Mays Hill Cemetery, overlooking his beloved Parramatta.